we're trying to win a race, an around the world sailing race. We need a really high performance boat to do that. And traditionally, building boats is a pretty unenvironmentally friendly process. Um, these boats are made of carbon fiber. They require a tremendous amount of resource and energy going into making them. So the approach for us was how do we try to win this race, but do that through a slightly different lens. Key to reducing these impacts and being better in our sector is really taking the three principal um, sectors of the marine industry, the manufacturers and suppliers, the boat builders, the clients, that's us, the teams, and the race and class organizations. By setting good policy, race rules that incentivize sustainability at the same level as performance. This boat's an Amoka 60, and the way that that works, there's a box rule within the class. There are certain parameters that the boat needs to be designed to. Within that, we have tried to bring a sustainability approach to that. Our longer term vision in working with the Amoka class is to change the rules or change the approach. What if in the next version of the ocean race, you had to use 30% or 50% or maybe even 100% someday of renewable material? In 2010, an Imoka boat was about 300 tons of carbon emitted. Today, 10 years later, it's twice that. And this is the opposite of what we should be trying to achieve to be in line with the Paris Agreement, which is requiring a reduction of 50% by the time we get to 2030, only eight years from now. So really, the industry is going four times too fast in the wrong direction. Now we need to understand what those challenges are and come up with the solutions. Embedding sustainability into the design and build process really started in 2019, bringing um, all of the key stakeholders around the table um, to really share ideas around how we could embed circular economy principles into the design and what kind of projects that we could do. Once the design stage has been completed, there are fewer opportunities to really embed sustainability in the process. The life cycle assessment, or LCA, is a method that we use to quantify all of the impacts of the design, build, use and end of life of the race boat. It's been really important to design with end of life in mind. One example is the our moulds. This is the hull mould that our boat was laid up in. It represents 50% of the impact of the boat as built. Our boat is just getting ready to be launched and we have another Emoka team building a new boat in this mold so they don't have to build a new one. So nominally we've reduced the impact of, an, of the mold by 50%. When we're talking about alternative materials, we're looking at those that are more circular. So for example, those that have a higher recycled content and that are more recyclable. We are also looking at more natural materials and plant-based products such as flax fiber composites or bio-based resins. Probably the biggest focus has been on flax. You know, it has a very small carbon footprint and it's grown locally as well here in Brittany. When we test an application, we try and either use a mold very similar or the, or the mold that we're going to use. And we just do honestly a sample part. We just do all the layers, we just tested and first we have method and then we have strength and durability. Durability is hard to test, it takes time, but the strength is very easy. The second thing we're focused on is recycled products. So a classic is our bunks uh, for our cradle, what our boat sits on. They're built out of recycled carbon fibre, flax fibre and recycled PET core. So first time I've used Recycle PET Core. Um, it's sold by a really reputable uh, company and honestly it's performing really well. And with the leftover core, we've been building other, other parts for the boat. We're working with Linear, based in Bristol who uh, have taken one of our old broken foils, they've recovered the fibres from it and they've created this with a water alignment technology, this carbon fibre tape that they're giving back to us to use for future components on board.
One of the challenges with all of this is the marine industry's reluctance, to be honest. It's very difficult to take a product that's unproven and untested and ask someone to sell it commercially. It really is hard. So we've found the best for us is to do it ourselves and just get stuck in. And uh, once you've got the product in stock, honestly, it's amazing how many areas you can try it on. What's made me most proud about this build is the ability to try some new things and really infil infiltrate it into the offshore sailing world. I think it's something that was t certainly off my radar two and a half years ago. Wasn't, I was, wasn't expecting to be building boats out of flax and other products. and It really has been a, a highlight of the career to be honest, to be able to get involved in something new rather than the same old, same old, which is what we, what we all normally do. I think we have a responsibility to do our part to minimize our impact and so just having that consciousness and doing what we can to um, continue to push the bounds of new technology, new innovation. We're hoping that the team can be a bit of an example that you can you know still be focused on trying to win on around the world race but do that in a different way and um, could be a very different landscape in a few years.